Thank you so much, Dr. Myers, for that brief summary of the unloading process and then what happened this morning and it's still continuing right now. So far, so good. Beautiful potteries that's going on. So now we're going to go back to our monitors that we have four sightings this year. We have Clemson, Shaixing, and the two other sightings and all. So we're going to talk to Clemson for a little bit. So hello, Clemson. How are you guys doing? That's good. That's good. So, how are you guys doing over there with the unloading process? And thank you so much, Clemson, for those beautiful potteries and all. Like I said, there was other sightings here at the World Fire event, and we also have three sightings over across the country, over the world. So right now, uh, we're looking right now, we have the Anagame here at the University of Montevallo. Then we have the other one at Clemson right next to us. And all. all right, so we're going to take a quick look at the Google Earth that we have with the other sightings across the world. So, so far, so good. We have, obviously, here at the University of Montevallo's kiln. Look at that beautiful kiln. That's where we are right now at this moment. Beautiful. Then, our next sighting that we're going to go is all the way to Shaoxing and their, Shaoxing and their kiln. And, like I said, you, we also have this website on our WordPress, so if you would like to look it up, please feel free to. And this is our other sighting of the World Kins for the World Fire. Yes. All right. World Fires with the S at the end, correct? All right. So if you would like to learn more information about the World Fire World Fires Kilns, please visit at the World Fires with the S dot WordPress dot com for more information. So that was a little quick view of the Google Earth and all. All right. All right, so we'll be Nope. I just I see what I see right here. Wes Wesley's pointing at it right now. <laughs> All right, so we were back with talking to Clemson. Clemson, how's everything going so far? As have you go for it? Tyson, what you said? Oh, okay. So, once again, we're back with Clemson and their unloading process that's going on with you guys. So, has everything? Good? All right. Okay. All right. Um, the monitor's just turned off. All right, so we're back with Clemson again, and they also submitted photos of their pottery process and all of the beautiful sightings, that beautiful stuff that they have as well. So, as you can tell, we see another beautiful art that it says World Fire logo still on their monitor on my left side. But that's all good, you know what I'm saying? That's also good, also good and all. So, yeah, but I'll... And their image. <laughs> All 
Is that from Clemson? All right, so Clemson also submitted some image of their pottery in their unloading process. So as you can tell, you see some pottery images and all, which is so beautiful from Clemson. You can also see more of all of the pottery and all, beautiful pottery. We also have some little mugs, some bowls, some cups and all. Oh my God. Oh, I know. I was just saying for right now, like they're talking. All right. Look at Clemson.
welcome to the World Fire event. I am at City Chavez, your host, and today I am here with Dr. Meyer, who has came this morning, took the bricks down, unloaded the process with the students and faculty and staff here at the University of Montevallo. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Meyer. Thank you for doing this. So, like I said, like I mentioned, you came here, you took the bricks, you went inside the kiln, and you took all the beautiful pottery that I'm looking right now so beautiful. What was it like for this huge Among Us process and all? Well, I always compare it. It's, it's like 50% Christmas morning and 50% Pompeii. <laughs> So a little bit of both, uh, you know, it's only 130 degrees in there, they informed me. So that's not, it's a little bit like a sauna really, but, uh, but I mean, obviously what it's about is, is just this community that's, uh, that's behind me to the right here. And, uh, um, and then the added project of World Fire uh, multiplies community times, uh, you know, exponentially. So. We're so grateful uh, for today, and uh, we're getting some really killer pieces out of there, too. So, I just saw some beautiful potteries, but what was your favorite one out of the potteries, if you can remember the kiln? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, I, I was just saying it, it's like a Springsteen concert in there. You know, it's like when, it, when you hit the three-hour mark of all these great songs, and it's like you want it to go on, but you almost can't take the beauty anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, I have a bunch of favorites. Uh, um, you know, actually, the favorite is a process that we just tried for the first time, thanks to our guest artist, Wu Mangzhe, uh from Taiwan, who uh, does a process called firing down, which means your reduction cooling the kiln. So it takes another six or seven hours after you dog tired from firing it to do this. But we're noticing a big difference in the product. So um, it's about all those little tidbits that aren't so little when they play out uh, in terms of the product. So That's good. I know there was like two entrants. So the big one, you came to the front of the kiln and then the other side. So was it more on the kiln side of the front or the side of the pottery? You know, uh, at the very bottom is the firebox, which is the main way we introduce fuel to the kiln. So traditionally, the things in the firebox are, are really heavily hit. They're they're heavily. It's it's a high heat that you get, a big huge melt on the on the surface of the work, and so that's traditionally the case. And then as you go back, traditionally it gets lighter and lighter. This does not do that, and uh, so this firing and actually the ones we've been doing recently, we're getting as effective work from the back, and really some prime areas in the back of the kiln. Um, that we really have, have, have not expected before. And uh, so that's exciting to see, you know, front to back, we've got, you know, some pretty nice, nice results. So. That's good. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Myers. So I have a little sneak peek of, Do of Clemson. I don't know if you guys can hear us, but hey, Clemson. Yeah, there's Clemson. Oh, oh. Oh, can you hear us? I can't hear you. That's good. Uh, yeah. We uh, we unloaded on Monday this past week. A um, lot of nice results. Um, but uh, a little hot in the front, more than we would like. Um, but it was fairly even for such a tall cross-draft kiln. Um it was about cone 11 everywhere except for the bottom where eight and a half, nine, um, which I expected kind of be cool, but, you know, making changes for the next firing, um, change the bag wall up a little bit, change how we stack. Um, but yeah, there's some nice results. A lot of, a lot of happy students. Um, I have some, uh, items that were on my desk, uh, student with, uh, slip cast bones that came out really nice and beautiful flashing um and a lot of nice work um my first time firing the kiln um it went well so yeah that's good would you ever want to do this experience again oh yeah absolutely <laughs> what yeah 120 a thousand percent um I'm excited, looking forward to future um, events like this. Um, you know, hopefully the goal is to fire our big kiln um, at the same time next time. 
because uh, we also have an Onagama, but um, needs a little love and we need some uh, community help. <laughs> so. Yeah, join that well, club, you know. <laughs> it does take it take the wear and tear on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Clemson. We'll be talking to you a few more minutes and all. Well, we wanted to also talk about your process of doing this event. So, like, the beginning till now, like, all of these people coming here, how does it feel to be doing this? Yeah, well, it, it's it's two events. It's the firing, and uh, delighted to see John on there. Uh, I mean, right now, you, you heard him analyzing what came out of what part of the kiln, what worked, what didn't work. What if you could multiply that feedback, you know, times every kiln that's participating? Uh, you know, you increase your knowledge of your own kiln and also your peripheral knowledge of other kilns, and which are, is not typically possible, hence the world fire approach. So, so we have two events here that are one inside of the other. One is just firing this kiln, and then the other you guys produced, uh, my colleague Jay Cofield, uh, who did probably for everything I know he did, he did 20 things that I didn't know that to, to produce this event. It's not easy, and I realized that. We had three sites from China, and then we had Clemson and then us. But as we get together during the firing on the fly, you know, we're talking to each other about what's going right, what's going wrong, what could we change. And um, it just increases, you know, you see the community behind me, and, of course, that's part of it here. But we extended the community globally by doing this project, so uh, we hope this is just the beginning. So right now we're looking at the process of you guys breaking down the um, bricks and all and going inside the kiln. What was it like to see the final pieces, like the finished product of the kiln, and how was the process to that? Yeah, you, you, uh, you grab your first little looks at what you've got. So if you can compare it to Christmas morning, you know, maybe you took a little peek under the wrapping paper and you're not quite sure what you're going to get, but... Um, you know, so it's that first little tentative peek at it. And first thing you see is, yep, we got temperature. The, the second thing you see is, yeah, we got surface. Uh, you know, this is a very uh, energy expensive way to get things hot. So if we don't have the additional quality that wood fire produces, it's just an awfully difficult way to get things uh, to temperature. So, um, so the first thing I'm looking at is, yeah, we got it. You know, at least we got it in the firebox, and then we start working our way back, and realize we have it throughout. So, it's a big exhale. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Right. We're, so we're going to look at some collaborations of the video that they have done for us here at the Kilns website as well. How many sticks of wood are you loading? We we just put in yeah we just put in six. Okay. We just put in five. Yeah. Nice. Going good What temperature? Two eighty four. How much? How much? Two eighty four. Two eighty four. Two eighty four. Oh dang, we're at, in the 1000s. Oh dang. Oh wow. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, I don't know if this is a still fire rate. Yeah, we're we're still going. We're uh we got a whole another day. So we'll flip the thing with us another day or they shut down. We're hitting the heat hit tonight. And we're going to, depending on the schedule, we're going to, like, zoom in and, like, watch the Are we going to uh, set that? Um, we're at about 2,000 degrees. Um, it's home five down, six soft spaces. Nice. We're we'll be done tonight around 10 p.m. Put stone 10 down everywhere, but we're gonna we're gonna watch 
the end of the firings for everyone. So that was a little collaboration video of the whole world can sit here at the, across the world and here in the United States. So we're going to go over to our Google Earth that we did. It's the look of the website is WorldFires with the S dot WordPress dot com. So we're going to take a little sneak peek of it right now. So. So, Dr. Myers, obviously, you know, the kilns and also can you give us a brief summary of each of the count if you know about them and all? Yeah, yeah, I know more about some than others, but obviously with uh, John and Clemson, I I guess uh, we had the most dialogue, you know, I mean, part of it is this language thing, and, uh, you know, as well as, you know, you're tapping into something, you know, across the, the earth, so, um, um, so a really sweet kiln that he um, fired for the first time, so, he, you know, terrific results uh, for him, and uh, then uh, Xiao Xing was very uh, participatory, and we looked up throughout our firing and saw them and they you know they, they were this um, it's professor bai ming is a is a wonderful artist over there and, a, and a, obviously a terrific teacher talking to his students as we did and uh, you know so they we tapped into them throughout their process and uh, of course we're talking about different kilns theirs is a train kiln um that that kiln's behind us here that we built here so it has a different firing uh uh, range and a you know cycle, so ours is the longest. So we had to figure out when do we want to tap into each other. When you know, and we picked okay when we're all pretty much at temperature because that's when stuff starts happening really. So anyway, that was uh, that was exciting to see them, and then there was another uh, uh, train kiln um, in Yixing, and um, they I think there was some technical issues there. You know, the sound was tough. And um, so we're looking forward to tapping back into that site. Uh, and then uh, um, I, I'm getting my kills mixed up. Jing Dezhen uh, was the train kiln, and Yixing was the dragon kiln. And the dragon kiln we got some cool shots of. It's a, Ours is about 40 feet long. Theirs is 150 feet long. We side-stoked through three little ports and up the side of our kiln. They have 62. So there are a lot of differences in design and, you know, probably in outcomes. They did not uh, choose to fire during our firing. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously a huge endeavor to fire a kiln that large. So we got some really cool shots um, that we saw. They took us on a tour. It looked a little like the Olympics, like the start of the games when you tap into different people and they, um, you know, talk about their site and, you know, say more or less hello world, you know. And uh, then, of course, we did. So, um, so like I say, there was a, a range of responses based on, you know, some technical things and some language things. But, you know, it, it, all in all, a pilot project like this, if this were a firing as a pilot project, it ain't easy. And uh, Mass Comm pulled this off. I mean, we fired our kiln. We've, we've been doing it for 21 years. <laughs> But uh, this was an en enormous venture for, for, uh, for you guys at, at MassCom and for uh, Professor Cofield. So um, we're really excited about the ability to expand um, community times, you know, however many kilns we can handle. So, well, Thank you so much for that brief summary. So we're back with Clemson. So Clemson, how was the unloading process for you guys over there? Was it hard? Was it easy? What was that process for you guys? Uh, it's usually pretty quick with a cross draft. Um, the hardest part is getting the door and the shelves out. Um, but a lot of hands to, uh, grab, grab work, hand it off. Everyone gets to touch it, see it, um, as it comes out, uh, seeing kind of the flame markings, um, seeing where the wood ash deposits are and, and all those kinds of things and seeing how the kiln fires and, um, how stacking, you know, can change it and really like impact your firing. And, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. Um, longest thing is cleaning, <laughs> really, uh, cleaning the shells, cleaning all the bricks, um, getting it ready so that when we get to the next time, we're not, uh, doing all that before we load. Um, but yeah, it went well. So, we're going to look at some images that you guys submitted to us. And 
cannot tell you it's so beautiful i wish i was an artist but i am not an artist so can you tell us more stuff about the potteries and like how was the students take away for that and like the process for them to do that for them as well yeah um you know some they weren't quite sure how everything was going to come out um a lot of questions on what glazes look well um there were discussions about um you know making sure not to glaze all the way to the foot some things like that a lot of raw clay um as you see in this picture here there's a there was some glaze and some chino uh the uribe looks amazing um on that yep on that on that jar um you can see some people glazed um using what we call floating blues um all throughout the kiln on the insides um a lot of slip work designs um but they they really tried to or i tried to get them to, to test as much as possible right so like don't glaze in the same color. I try to use flashing slips, try to use chinos, try to use raw clay bodies in areas, um, different things like that. Um, a mo uh, mod podge of clay bodies, um, porcelain slap, uh, slip casting um, recipes. Uh, one of those images is a new, uh, a new porcelain that I've been working with that I like um, specifically to get that pinkish, uh, flashing on there um but we ran into some uh some interesting uh interesting issues with some of the clays there are some high iron clay bodies that were in there um that ended up dunting which is cracking on cooling or you had some bloating issues um but like like uh scott was talking about earlier it's like christmas morning and the pompeii you get you get a lot of great stuff out and then you there's a high loss rate. And um, I think the students really, they have their favorite pieces that came out and they're, they're that like, wow, this is, this piece is so beautiful that they don't even care about the other ones that they lost that. And so that's, that's been really nice. Uh, a lot of them are re really pumped. They're like, are we going to do it again? I go, yeah, start, we got to start splitting wood. Uh, uh, talking about students, we're going to have a quick commercial break, and we are going to we'll do an interview with Jada Bryant, who is a student here at the University of Montevallo, and we're going to talk about some of her artists and what was her process about this. Stay tuned, you guys. Hi, my name is Jada Bryant. I'm an art major, and this is my junior year. My favorite thing about the Anagama Kiln is the results once the pieces come out. My inspiration, I don't really have many. I just kind of go with the flow with it. My process typically is I'll start with the sketch, and then I'll go from the sketch of creating a mock-up, and then once that is approved, I'll go to making the final product. This is for our final project, um, and we have to make a portrait bus, basically, um, to represent ourselves, but we also have to throw like little symbols in there that can like portray our personality a little bit more. So I have a succulent on the top and it's to represent like being a low maintenance type of person. Like I don't really require much. I just kind of enjoy life as is. Um, and then I'm going to put a butterfly on the top and that means, you know, rebirth, you know, just evolving in life and, and becoming a better person. And then at the bottom will be a planter to hold the entire head and it's basically just about growing and you know being better yes so that piece was actually for my vessels project um, that we have to make in the hand building class for ceramics and for that i wanted to create a space where it looks like as if someone is coming out of like a dark world um, and it's just really about, like, I guess, like that phasing a li in your life, if you will, um, where, like, you may be going through bad times, but in the end, like, there's always a way out. Like, you can always get out of it and prosper. And we're back. 
And we're back with our most interesting and Jada Bryan. So, Jada, what was it like to do this experience, to do this event with your school and with your professor, Dr. Meyer? Because obviously he was an impact for you. So what was it like to do all of this experience and all? It was, like, super exciting, and it was definitely a lot of hard work. Um, this was probably by far, like, one of the coolest ceramics experiences I've ever had. Like, I've never got to do anything like this before until I came to Montevallo. So, yeah, it was super, overall definitely enjoyable. I'd do it again. It's it's so much fun. And if you haven't done ceramics, do it so you can have an experience with the Anagama Kiln for sure. It's it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So I am not an artist, but you have a piece with you. So can you tell us what was the process and what was it like to do this piece? And come like looking at your piece coming out of the kiln, obviously. Obviously, that kiln is really, really hot. So how was that process of you doing that till right now? And what was your uh, biggest takeaway of this piece and all? So for this piece, it actually was kind of one of the easier pieces to do because this was all like built by hand. It wasn't like I had to throw in the wheel or anything. Um, Going into the kiln, I just kind of, like, hope for the best. Like, I actually put the glazes on there. I was like, okay, I hope this is going to look good. And then with the effects of the Anagami kiln, kind of have, like, that ash, like, um, like texture on it and stuff. And then, like, the glazes turning to different colors. Yeah. So with the kiln and, like, potteries, what was, obviously, besides your favorite uh, pottery, but what was yours out of the people giving you the hands because I know you guys were doing still doing the unloading process so like what was one that you loved about the most hmm it's hard to choose it's hard to choose because they all look so good oh man I can't that's a difficult question to ask yeah. oh I'd say overall I can't pick <laughs> yeah overall <laughs> Well, that's good because, like, I've seen, like, right now, as you can tell, you guys are looking at the potteries. Like, there's, like, a lot of cups, a lot of mugs, a lot of pots, and a lot of babies and all. But looking at these, is there other um, pieces that you did besides this? Yes. Actually, I did the little small cloud platter right there. You probably can't see it because it's, like, all together. Sorry about that. Um, I put, like, a cloud, not, no, what is it called? Copper grape. And it's, like, supposed to be, like, a purple and bluish color. But it turned out to be more purple, which is fine. Because we like those happy accidents. And we just kind of go with the flow. Well, I'm no artist, but these are so beautiful. If I was doing one, I would not make one. It would be all melted by the first thing and all. But thank you so much for joining us, Jada. We do appreciate you guys doing this. And, obviously, this beautiful artwork. And Obviously, this to mermaid. Obviously, I am a fan of this. Not gonna lie, but there's beautiful potter, um, potteries and all that stuff as well. So we'll be we'll be looking at some more um, images of Jing the Xing, who has submitted their photos and all to us. So, so right now we're going to look at Xiao Xing's unloading of this process. We'll be right back. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to come back. And here is the uploading time. Here, here are the works on the third layer. These are the works on the top floor and the second floor. And we think the top floor is better. <coughs> and we've already got enough plates that we want.
Uh, as you can see, this one is uh, already glazed before the wood firing, and this one is not with the glaze before our wood fire. But this one is about the fourth layer of the works. Uh, the fire inside is really smooth, and we think the fire outside is a little bit influenced by the um, earthenware because they are all melt. They can't stand the temperature that high, so the fire, the the, the way the fire goes, it is a little bit um, influenced. And here is an example. You can see the glaze. We have full glaze now, and this one is without glaze before firing. And for the temperature, we've got the coins here. We use coins 7, 8, 9, and 10, and they are all melt. Look at this uh, layer, it's about the fourth layer, you can see some works, they are just uh, collapsed. Here are almost all the works of this uh, firing, and uh, you will see the results. You can see like these ones, white ones, they are glazed, and uh, and like these uh, works are unglazed before firing, and uh, different. You can see different clays. They make different effects. Like this one, they are about. Uh, they are made of uh, um, stoneware clay, and uh, others. Others the clays. They are just uh, mixed, and uh, you also see some works that uh, um, it's not that good. They just uh, stick on the shelf. But uh, the result is good. You, you can see some, uh, like some materials, they just uh, stay on the surface. And we're not so satisfied with the result because we think the temperature is a little bit high. And you can see the glaze shining. And if the temperature is not so high, they will shine in like this. And we think that will be a better result for us. This is the work under the chimney. And we think we've got a really good result here. And also these two piece of work. And we're back. Thank you so much, Shai Shang, for that beautiful video and all. I am here with Madeline, who is another student here at the University of Montevallo, and she brought us some of her artwork. So, Madeline, tell us these beautiful arts that you have right here. Obviously, there's three. So what was the process of each one of them? Which was the biggest takeaway? What was your experience doing the Kiln event and the World Fire, and also with other people as well? Yeah, this has been... Well, this is my second year uh, participating in the Onagama, and every time I took a kiln shift, every piece I get out of it, I learn something new. So these are just the ones that I've gotten out so far. I should have like five or six more that come out of the kiln, and they all turn out so different. And that's because of like the location in the kiln, the glaze I put on it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really amazing process, and it's a great time to like collaborate with other artists and just learn from each other. That's good. So you're talking about the glaze part, so what was it like to look at it in the beginning like, I hope it will come out really great, but what was that process of like thinking of like, oh, I hope it comes out really beautiful, but actually they turn out really well, so beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, it's definitely a high risk, high reward kind of situation. Um, you know, some things I'm not crazy about, some things I actually refired because I didn't like them beforehand and I like them better now. But um, I actually had to, like, take photos and keep notes of what glaze I put on everything because I didn't do that last year. And I think it kind of hindered me this year because I didn't know exactly what results I would get. So, yeah, it was just nice to, like, keep track 
a little bit better this year of what I was going to get. Okay, so besides the Alabamian, obviously you're a, sh a staff member there. So what was your major and what was it like to do this outside of your major and all? Yeah, so I'm actually an art major. Um, MMJ is my minor, um, and that's kind of how I was able to be editor-in-chief of the Alabamian this year. So I do have my love of journalism, but um, this is where my heart lies, <laughs> if I'm being really honest. Um, so having to kind of decide what to pursue was really difficult, but that's why I really enjoyed seeing what's happening this year, the collaboration between art and journalism. It's been great to see. Well, thank you so much. Obviously, they're still unloading more potteries. Hopefully, we get to see yours soon because I'm really excited. But I've been seeing so many beautiful art pieces coming out, and you guys killed it. Like, for real, you guys did amazing. And honestly, like, the shift. So what was it like, the shift, like, obviously? Yeah, um, it was different. Every shift I took was totally different than the last one. I think I did a total of five shifts, so a total of 20 hours working at the kiln. Um, and that's not including the time that I would just come and hang out and check on things. Um, but as the firing process went on, it got far more intense. Um, my favorite thing is side stoking. So I would be up on the side of the kiln um, throwing wood into our side ports. And it can be really intense, but it's so much fun. And I felt really confident going into it because of, like, my experience last year and the people I had here to kind of lead and guide me on how to do it safely. Well, thank you so much, but we are still going to do a different shot of the kiln and all. So we're going to let you guys see the unloading of the process of the kiln right now. As you can tell, they're on the other side of the kiln. They're not in the front this time, but they're on the other side. And there's still beautiful artwork coming out. Obviously, as you can tell, there's cups, some different abstracts of art and all, which is even really beautiful and really excellent. And so far, so good. I've been seeing so many beautiful art. Like, some people have blue colors because of the glaze. Some has, like, little designs of their um, pottery and all. But it's so beautiful. And I've been loving this process of you guys doing this. And honestly, I might buy one, not going to lie, because they're so beautiful. So, yes, they're so beautiful. There's one about a fish that I'm looking right now that they just handed someone to the inn. And it's a unique fish and all, which... I can never, honestly, as you can tell, I cannot do art, as you can tell. Like, I cannot do art. But there's also, like, the beginning of the unloading process in front of me as well. Like, the cups and, like, some plates and all, a bowl, and the glaze of these beautiful things and all. But you know more than this, as you can tell. So what was it like to do the unprocess of the kilns to right now? So from beginning to end, I think my favorite part is seeing, like, how someone expects their work to come out versus how it actually comes out, it is, again, a high-risk, high-reward situation. Um, so the people who are happy with their pieces are so happy with their stuff. Um, and I think it's also really cool to see that, like, you can have pieces with the same glaze and they're, like, the same clay body, but they turn out very differently based on where they were in the kiln and where they are, like, what temperature they're fired at. Um, we also did a reduction cooling this year with the kiln, which we had not done in previous years. And I think that brought out some really amazing, um, like, unique features in some of this work. All right. Well, thank you so much, Madeline. I am so excited to look for your other artworks and all. Well, thank you so much. I'll give this back to you. And our next interview is our former, obviously, a student here at the University of Montevallo. Olivia, can you come over here, please? Thank you. You want me to hold one? Oh, ooh, this is a little warm right now. Ooh, it just came out of the kiln, as you can tell. But um, obviously, a student here at the University of Guatemala, this big experience, this big event for you, how was it the takeaway? What was the experience like here at the World Fire event? Um, well, this was my first Anagama. So I had two shifts. It was both like 1 to 5 a.m. shifts. So it's when everyone's delirious and you have to keep it going. And the first night, very calm. Uh, there's not much to do other than keeping it stoked. But the last night, I also did the last night, and it's like 2,400 degrees. You open the thing, your neck starts burning, and you're like, what am I doing? Uh, but then you see the work that you have out there, and you're amazed, completely amazed. Um, so overall, I think it was a great experience. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, it's two weeks of well, really three weeks of loading, firing, and then waiting to get it out. And I enjoyed it, personally. 
Well, as you can tell, there's some pottery in our hands. And also, what was the design? What was going in your mind? I'm like, I'm just going to do this and this pottery. Or I'm going to do this and this one. Or, like, what was the takeaway? And what was, like, your biggest fear that your pottery was going to come out of the kiln? Um, well, broken. I was terrified it was going to be broken. Because my stuff, or, like, stuck to someone else's. But um, I also do printmaking. So I like to incorporate textiles and printmaking uh tools whenever making my pieces so I was just hoping that it'd pick anything it could up from the fire but and I'm pretty happy with it so far I think it looks good I, I was gonna say I love the coloring of this one the blue and the brownish colors but yours is different from some of them so I know there's a difference between the glaze but what is this called um, I have stain I believe or yeah I have stain this is blue stain this is rutile stain and then that is rutile stain so the rutile has more of a metallic brown shine to it, while the blue is this nice, really deep, almost turquoise color, or brilliant. Um, I love it. I, I was worried that the glaze wouldn't pick up enough, so I wanted to let the natural clay body really do its job, and I think it did. So obviously there's three of these beautiful artworks in, in all, but what was, what was this meaning to you? Like, what was, like, this going in your mind? Like, I'm doing this such and such, or, like, what was the significance of these artworks? Um, experimentation and trying out new things. I'm new to ceramics myself, so trying to get anything out there and finding whatever outcome I can is very exciting to me, and I enjoy it thoroughly. So. Well, thank you so much. And as you can tell, they're still continuing the unloading of the World Fire Count here at the University of Montevallo. So we're going to go next to the Anagama video, so stay tuned with that. My name is Arabella Cortez. My major is in art. I don't have a concentration. God was needing people to help out. And, um, you know, I love being involved in the arts. I was really into ceramics. I wanted to help out. And I honestly wanted to have this, like, experience of being close to, like, this thousand-year-old tradition. So I was like, you know, can't, um, can't be bad helping the Anagama. So that's what I did. So I signed up for, for a shift, a four hour long shift um, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And um, all I did was stoke the flames in the Anagama every five minutes at like different intervals and like, you know, put in the different amount of wood in like different holes at the side of the kiln. That was basically my job. So um, if I'm gonna tell you, if you wanna be helping out the Anagama next year, be prepared. Be involved. Be involved with the art community because there's, there's so much things to do. And the Anagama is just one, one tiny thing you could do. There's so much other opportunities to do. So, yeah, be involved. Well, thank you so much for that beautiful video and all. So we're going to talk about more specifically about the artwork and what were your comments about this artwork as well. Sure. Um, yeah, I've been watching this stuff come out. I usually don't get this vantage point because I'm usually in the line or in the kiln. So it's been cool watching them go past. And I, I was reflecting on some of the things that John said. And, um, you know, if you wanted to list the various factors that contribute to how these things look, I mean, you start with clay body. You know, what does the clay consist of? Where was it from? You know, what location in some cases affect it? Uh, how do you glaze it? What surface do you put on it? What texture is on it? Then you get into where it is in the kiln. Somebody just scored. <laughs> then you get into where it is in the kiln. What was next to it in the kiln? We load this kiln for a solid week. And part of the reason we take so long is because every artist here, every student here has aims, creative goals that they have, and we're trying to help them reach them. And so it's about where it is in the kiln, and like I say, what's next to it and so forth. So it's this alchemy of all of the, all these different factors. Then you get into the actual stoking of it, like you just saw. And, um, you know, we had a really good student uh, participation this time. They were just on it hour after hour and day after day and really proud of that, proud of them. Because that's why this has, uh, you know, been a success. Um, but what kind of wood are you stoking? Uh, you know, we stoke mainly pine, but we had oak this time. Um, what procedures are new to us? We reduction cooled for the first time, my first time this time. 
And so, you know, what did I just list about 10 different factors, all of which could contribute to how the things look. And then there's just flat out luck or things that are beyond our reach or, um, or our understanding. And uh, I guess that's where the alchemy comes in. And uh, if you look over the arch of the kiln, you see a, a couple of what we call kiln guardians. And, uh, of course, creative people standing around with a bunch of clay in their hands tend to make stuff. If things are out of your control, you need a good luck charm or something to look after the kiln uh, when we can't. And so those little, little uh, usually they're little beasts or little, uh, you know, figures of some kind. And they're just kind of a whimsical thing. But... Uh, it, it taps into your spirituality sometime because uh, you have so much riding on these things and uh, your own work and everyone else's. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just an amalgamation of all the things and all those factors I just listed. So. so you just mentioned about stoking. So what is stoking and what is the process of like the beginning to end of it? Yeah, stoking, um, that's a good one to follow throughout the process because it is 100 plus hours of, uh, you know, for our firing cycle. And um, we actually start the flame outside of the kiln because just inside of that firebox at the bottom is actually work. And we don't want to crack it by thermal shocking. So we start a little flame outside the kiln. And I've described the process to people as, you know, like a barrage. And they they look at it and they see a little flame. It looks like something you'd sing Kumbaya around. And uh, they're like, well, you know, where's the activity? But it picks up from there. And we, we inch the flame inside of the firebox over the first couple of shifts. So about eight hours into the firing, we're inside the kiln. And then it's about building up a coal bed. And um, so we're really stoking that for about a day and a half just in the firebox at the bottom. And then we start side stoking. And that adds to the choreography and activity that's around the kiln. Because there are three corridors that go through the, you know, I guess the best way to understand it, if the kiln were a loaf of bread, you would not have a slice in three different areas up the side of the kiln. So in other words, no work is in those spots. It's like a corridor that goes through. And <laughs> that is our resident YC that's discovered something. But um, anyway, it's a little archeological dig. But anyway, we start the side stoke and that means putting wood in the side uh, uh, as well. And so that continues for the rest of the firing. So it's, it's a real, um, specific and almost a military operation the way we do it you have to do it you have to pay attention you can't drift mentally for a second and it's a little bit like a game you know and when you're on the field you better have your head in it you know and um, so the person that's stoking throwing wood in the bottom uh, calls the shots that's the quarterback and uh, then we side stoke back to front and uh, it's a it's a specific uh, pattern that we follow and uh, so you can do it once, you can do it twice. We have to do it for two and a half solid days. So, you know, 55 hours of doing that. So you mentioned about the oak wood stoking. So what is that process and like a more depth of what that definition as well? Yeah, um, I understand there's a kind of a, um, a facsimile of our uh, kill log, which we keep. So every hour we write you know, whatever factors going on at the time, whatever's influencing the firing, we keep a log. And um, it's sort of like, like a, a journey on a schooner or something. You sort of keep a, a captain's log of what's going on. And then that helps us understand what happened. So um, about a day and a half, I guess it was up to the two-day mark, um, you know, we, we get the wood from different places. We have a great um, company that supplied most of this, which... Um, we're really grateful to gray uh, landscapers because they just, um, you know, gave us most of this wood. But we had about three cords of oak, and uh, that's a significant amount of wood. And we split it, and uh, it doesn't, it burns hotter, but it doesn't burn fast. And uh, so that's the difficulty of stoking with oak. It does give you a different color range sometimes, and so there's that. And so day two, at the end of day two, I threw the first little bit of oak in because I wanted to know what it would do. Because if it doesn't burn fast, I've got a whole different way of approaching the end game. So I had him throw some oak in there and see how it burned, and it exploded. It was just bang. It gave up all its, all its energy in a hurry. 
when I saw that happen, I knew we were okay because we stoked the oak, got crazy temperature, and then finished it out with a pine. So, um, you know, so decisions like that. And then with a the world fire component to the, all of this, I just listed 10, 12 variables. There are probably a lot more that I didn't. But if, you, if we enter a dialogue with these other kilns, see the outcomes of them, you heard John talking about, you know, there was some bloating here, there was this and that. You know, we increase our peripheral vision, you know, exponentially by talking to each other. Uh, I mean, this is a community that you see behind me. Multiply it times the world because that's what we just did. And uh, so our way of learning, it, you know, is just going to increase dramatically, I would think. so. Yeah. Speaking of the world, Clemson, what are your final thoughts of this experience that you guys did? And what was the takeaway? And obviously you just said 1,000 percent you will do this again in the near future. But as well, will you do it again with the world fire as well? muted Clemson can you hear oh. me yeah we can hear you now <laughs> beautiful introduction oh. as well but we got you <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah uh thousand percent firing with the world fire again um I listened to Scott talk about uh firing with pine primarily and like you know supplementing a little bit with oak you know, with us, it was oak all the way to the end. Um, I fired past kilns, and I used 100% pine. Um, it, it makes these changes, but it's, it's really interesting to hear that someone else is firing in the same way, was using oak, and, you know, going, oh, yeah, we can use this. And hearing these, like, results and seeing some of the pots as they came out and, like, picking up information – um, even just seeing the video of, I believe, uh, Yi Ching, um, I can see that they have elephant teeth is what they're called in the arch of their kiln, which is brick that is set farther in. So it kind of has dips and um, extrusions of brick. And it's really interesting to see that because I've seen that on a few kilns, but it really helps flame move and make flame marking through the top of the kiln. And so like, just being able to see that little point is is huge to me because it's just inf it's more information I'm filing. It's constant filing of information, and I, it's really exciting to uh, to be a part of this and to expand and grow is what I think Scott's wanting to do too, and I'd I'd love to be a part of it. Well, there's your answer right there. So what are your final thoughts with that as well? Well, my final thoughts are thank you, John, because uh, that was the right answer. That, that was the one I wanted to hear because uh, <laughs> we had a blast doing it. I mean, it's also, you know, I guess wrapping it up, it's also fun. I mean, it's also, you know, being a part of a team and uh, extending the team past what's located in a particular spot. Um you know, it just multiplies the fun and, and also multiplies, like I said, our understanding of what we're doing. Um, we're going to look at this. I just, you know, I'm looking at a survey of some of it on the screen now. And so we're going to analyze that, you know, just like John's approach and what worked, what didn't work and so forth. So, um, so this is just a start. It's just a start here at this small city in Montevallo. Well, I want to say thank you so much, you guys, for participating and for doing this experience, obviously, with us. And to look more information, go to worldfires with the S dot wordpress dot com. And we want to take a moment to look at the potteries that they unloaded for the last time here at the University of Montevallo. Take a look. <laughs> 